What's going on guys, Mark from Worlds of Emulation here. Today is another week of rapid fire emulation news, where I basically talk about emulation news from the past few days, and there's a lot to go over, so let's get started. We'll start off some small news regarding the PCSX2 emulator and the changes they have made. They will now support 64 bit versions of Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. Now what does this exactly mean? Well, when it comes to performance, nothing has changed, but under the hood, there are features that are hard to come by for 64-bit computers running a 32-bit emulator. In other words, less obstacles to implement features like ARM64 Mac support, etc. Those features will now be much easier to implement for 64-bit computers. Ryujinx is up next. Little amount of changes here and there, but they made a major change when it comes to changing the resolutions in your Nintendo Switch games. You can now scale up to 8K resolutions and the results are absolutely fascinating. The Real Jinx devs have made comparisons to native and 4 times resolutions. And honestly, in my opinion, the results are night and day. Though, this video itself does not really represent that. You can check these comparisons yourself much better in the description down below by sources. Anyways, really nice to see and a very nice feature to have. Now some big news. Simu 1.20.0 has just been released to Patreons just a few days ago. And the changes here are really amazing. The main feature here is a new GPU buffer cache. With this new implementation, there are many things that have been improved, tweaked, and fixed. Mainly, there will be better performance in some games, as well as fixed crashes in Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, specifically level 2-1, and will also not have correct backgrounds. They also fixed Sonic Boom's graphics where polygons would be all over the place, but as they described it, it is not perfect. They also fixed broken particles in Breath of the Wild, and that's it for the GPU buffer cache, onto some quality to life improvements. They added a import slash export option for saves in Title Manager. A quick start guide will automatically fill in the MLC folder if it is known from a previous CMU installation, updated language files, and added support for nearest neighbor up slash downscaling filter. That's all the changes worth pointing out. CMU 1.20.0 will be released to the public on July 17th, 2020. On to the next emulator is the Dolphin Emulator. They made their Dolphin progress report from May and June, and they made the following changes. These changes happened not too long ago. One of the big highlights is fixing save states and memory cards. I personally had this issue where I saved a state on Dolphin, and then when I save in game, the game will tell me that I did not have a memory card. Therefore, I have to save state every time I want to save my progress, which is an annoying bug, but thankfully, this person had fixed the issue. There are other changes as well, like fixing missing effects in Wind Waker on Android devices, here are the comparisons on screen, as well as supporting new game formats RVZ and WIA, allowing to compress your games even further. Here's a chart provided by the devs on the Dolphin Emulator's website. Feel free to pause the video, very big differences between an ISO and a RVZ. If you want to see other changes, link is in the description by sources. Now some user news, and this will be the final news of the week. There have been many changes and features implemented in the early access versions of Yuzu for the past week or so, and some features eventually came to the public mainline versions. So first off, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe now goes in game. You may experience crashes, visual bugs, etc. So keep that in mind. They also rewrote the Mii services, so now with the Mii services fixed, you can add your own Mii's in game like Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. This leads to stages not crashing and working, Tomodachi Life and Find Me in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Although this requires a dump of the Mii system archive as they contain the actual Mii models. They are also rewriting the audio renderer, added GameCube controller support, and etc. There are many minor fixes they have made, so I won't go every single one of them. All these changes will be implemented in the public versions, although some of these features have already been there. That's it for rapid fire emulation news. This video should have been done a week ago, but I got really busy for the past week, and I apologize for that. 
anyways, if you guys want to support me financially, I have a Patreon in the description down below. Follow my Twitter account to keep up to date. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, please give this video a like, it helps a ton, and subscribe for more news and emulation coverage. See you guys in the next video. Thank you.